Now this really is a cinch. Hey folks, we are back with another video, and today we are going to be working on a Race Face Next SL crank set. We're going to be removing it, cleaning it up, reinstalling it. Very easy job. Anybody could do it. Uh, but there are two things that are pretty important that most people do that I really don't think they should be doing, and I will go over those as we get into this video. I'll try and keep this video short. All right, so... The tools we're gonna need right off the bat are an eight millimeter Allen key or any kind of pedal wrench or any kind of eight millimeter wrench basically with an Allen head uh, in order to take off the spindle, a two millimeter Allen key in order to loosen the pinch bolt, the preloading bolt in the back. We're gonna need some grease, we're gonna need alcohol and some paper towel. With all that being said, let's go straight into the job. For starters, what we're gonna wanna do is move the chain out of the way. All right, so just take this guy, put him out of the way. A lot of people think that the first step is to actually loosen the preload bolt, and I, I don't recommend it at all. Uh, let me show you why. So this is our adjuster, our tension adjuster for your crank set, right? And it has a two millimeter screw on it, and this is a crappy screw. It's cheap, it's weak. I guarantee you that the day will come where you will strip this screw. So when trying to loosen it or or tighten it in this position when it's on the crank, uh, put you in a really odd position, right? I highly recommend getting some kind, having some kind of long uh, driver just like this with a two millimeter bit on it, uh, because if you use a regular angled Allen key, it's going to be real tight in there, and you're not you're not going to get a good grip. And I guarantee you're going to strip this thing, right? We do not need to loosen this guy to remove the crank. When we're removing the crank, we are removing first the drive side arm and then we remove the non-drive side arm with the spindle as a whole. So do not loosen this yet. Loosen it when it's out of the system, when you have better control to make sure that you have a tight fit of that two millimeter bit onto this head. All right, just a small little tip. Next, we wanna grab our crank, all right? And we're gonna hold it with the chain stay together, okay? Then we're gonna take our eight millimeter we're gonna put it in a socket and we're gonna turn it counterclockwise. Now, the first turn is gonna to be tough, okay? Because this thing's on here at around 50 newton meters. So the first push is gonna to be tough, just like that, right? Then it'll get soft, but then it'll get tough again. Not as tough, but there we go. But tough enough, and then it will come out, okay? So I'm gonna take this guy, turn him around, and drive, drive side is off, okay? Now, we wanna take out the spindle, right? Sometimes he'll need a couple of good taps. Wow, okay, so that's a problem. Um, the spindle should come off relatively easy. Okay, there should be no real hard, hard force like this. That tells me that these bearings are not aligned. In other words, when these cups were put in, they weren't put in aligned to each other because this should not happen. I'm gonna need a soft mallet. I'll be back. We are back with the mallet. Again, this guy's not coming out easy. Wow, yeah, that is not good. That should not happen. If you have a crank set that you're removing and you need to tap it just like the way I did, that's the bottom bracket. This bottom bracket not being aligned with the other bottom bracket. And I'll tell you what, I'm looking at the spindle over here and you can see two grooves in the spindle. That tells me that this is the outside of the bearing on this side that's been digging into the spindle over here. And even on this spindle, there's a good amount of wear on this side. There's a good lip over here. There's, with my fingertip, I could feel a lip. So again, it should not be that hard. Not to say it should be totally easy. It's not gonna just slip out, but you should be able to get it out with just your hands. And I guarantee you, just from that and by being able to feel 
the crankset when I was spinning it before that one of the bearings is pretty shot. So let's take a look at that before we work on cleaning these guys here. First thing I'm gonna do is just clean up the bearings a little bit. Let's roll them with my hand. This one here, it is spinning nicely. No grinding, no nothing, right? So this bearing, no movement, no lateral play. This one's in good shape. Now let's try the other one. Holy cow. Uh, let's get the camera on that. So this is the non-drive side. Not sure if you could hear that. Let's get the microphone closer. That you do not want to hear. This bearing is totally shot. It is literally grinding on the races. It's been worn down. The balls are probably cubes in there for crying out loud. So this guy absolutely needs to get replaced. The problem is right now that this is a BB-92. I don't have any BB-92s because BB-92s use special, what is it, 41 millimeter shells? By then this is a 30 millimeter spindle. Everything I do is threaded bottom bracket for years now. I love BSA. To me, it's just so much simpler, so much easier for people to manage. Uh, and I have a whole bunch of NTN bearings, which by the way, guys, highly recommend replacing your bearings with NTN bearings. NTN bearings have so proven themselves to me over the years, it's not funny. They are outstanding. It costs a little bit more, but trust me, they are worth it in every single which way or form. But I don't have, I have only uh, 6806 bearings, which are for BSA, which is 42 millimeters by 30. So I won't be able to fit the bearing in here in this cup. That's absolutely for sure. I'm going to need new bottom bracket cups for this guy. Great. I was not expecting that. I will deal with that later as I order the bot new bottom brackets for this guy. So let's get back to cleaning the crank set and reinstalling the crank set and showing you the second tip that I find a lot of people sort of get wrong, all right? Okay, so we remove the crank. Now, first things first, we need to loosen the bolt here. Again, when doing this on the bike, you, th these are very weak screws in here. They strip really easy. One wrong move, you will strip this bolt you have much better chances of not stripping it if you take it out and you actually remove it from here, all right? So just give it a little bit of a loosen. You don't need to do much and it'll unscrew. There's very little that needs to be done to keep this thing tight, literally. So let's say right now, for instance, I'm not even at the end, but who cares? I'm just gonna take it and loosen it by about a quarter turn. And now I can't move it, right? I mean, it stinks. So these don't have to be locked together. You just need to turn it enough where it doesn't spin. So in fact, that's spun a little bit. So if I turn just a little bit more, now it's not turning for nothing, right? And again, there's still space over here. So just an FYI on that one. Don't crank these down too hard. Just crank them enough where they don't spin. All right, and this way you'll save your, your, your bolt over here. All right, so. Like I said, just loosen a little bit. We're gonna take this thing out. Before we take it out, let's take out our dust seal. All right, now we're gonna unscrew this guy. And take him out. Okay, and we have the other dust seal. On this side, we're not gonna take out anything, but what we are gonna do is clean everything up real well. And for that, we're gonna need alcohol. First things first, Gonna start on the crank. And I don't know what all this brown stuff is on this bike, but there's like a goopy paste, a hard goopy paste on this bike. Let's see if a plastic brush takes care of it. And the threads. Yep, that was taking care of it. All right, so do that one more time. Okay, now the other area, you wanna clean the threads on the inside over here. All right, I wanna remove all debris from in there. Let's try this guy. Actually, he's not too bad. 
I've seen much worse. Okay, now let's try this again. Actually, grab this one right here. Bunch them up and spin them in like you're threading them in there. Ooh, that's looking a lot cleaner. Much, much better. Okay, and then clean these guys in here. All right. So the axle is done. Next, we clean the threads in here. Plastic brush, do not use a metal brush on them. The whole idea is to get the best connection we could get. All right. All right. Dust seals. Now, the important part to clean the dust seals right here, there's a lip, and that lip needs to be there. Very important that that lip is there. In fact, the only grease that gets applied to this thing is on the inside of that lip. You don't need to over grease your bottom brackets. It's actually a bad thing. All right. Let's brush. Again, we want that lip. Because this part here sits on the bearing. This part here sits away from the bearing, right? So we want this part to sit on the bearing so the bearing spins freely on the outside part, right? And then we just put a little bit of grease on the outside part in order to protect moisture from coming in and that's it. But you don't want the grease to pour out. So it's very important that we have space and that there is a sharp edge on the dust cap. One dust cap. Ah, this one's greasier, much greasier. All right. Then use your fingernail on the edge on the inside and spin it around. And grab what you can. So you're trying to grab your fingernail inside here. All right, that guy's done. Now we clean the inside here and we try and clean the best we can with the threads on the inside because this is what threads onto the inside of the spindle. All right. What you can do is grab a smaller brush to sort of help you out with the threads to loosen things up in there. Just like that. All right. Now to get on the inside, Grab a cleaner towel. We could grab a pick, put it inside, and just spin it around just like that. That'll help clean the threads as well. And grab any other crap that's in there. See what I mean? I'm surprised the camera hasn't overheated yet. Watch it overheat. All right, this guy is officially done. Now, one more thing you can do if you want. If there's buildup on your, what you call this one's clean, but if there's buildup over here, like a lot of gunk buildup, this one's not too bad. See what I mean? Some gunk builds up and the chain doesn't stay fully seated. The worst part's always around here. 
All right, so just like that. See, I mean, all the gunk that comes out. This one's actually not too bad. I've seen much worse. So this helps this chain sit cleaner or better in the actual, on the actual, wow, look at that, huh? Um, chain ring. Let's see if this side's better. The outside usually is not all that bad. It's always the inside that's worse than the outside. And he is done. Grab some paper towel, clean him up, and he's ready to be put back on the bike. So, we're gonna take this guy. We're gonna slide him in, and we're just gonna turn him all the way to the edge. Just like that. All right, you don't have to crank him down to the edge, because trust me, you're gonna have to bring him out again to tighten him on the bottom bracket, all right? Now we're gonna grab the dust seal. Now again, you have the lip over here. Flat side goes to the outside. The, Bubble side over here, it goes to the inside of the crank, right? So, take this guy, put him on, boom. This crank set here is the same crank set on that video that I had uploaded recently on a seized pedal, okay? And in that video, you see that I actually tested the threads with a different pedal and it worked. So I know that the threads just need to be cleaned out, okay? So that's what we are gonna do over here. We got a couple of taps, one for a right crank, the other one for the left crank, 916 taps, right? And I should be able to, by hand, go in there and just clean out the dirt. Now what we can do is take a little bit of thread oil, all right, just a little bit, and basically put some, I wish it was a different application, just put a little bit on the actual threads. Okay, and this is a drive side crank, so to put the pedal on, we're going to be turning towards the front of the bike, right? So I should be able to, by hand, just slowly go in there and take out all the grit and grime in between the threads. Just like that. All right, we are through. See, all that grime. That's what made it difficult. So the pedal wasn't seized. It just had some kind of corrosion buildup on the inside of the threads. All right, so we can try that one more time. And now it goes in real nice and smooth. Done. That is drive side. And now for the non-drive side. Really is dumb. Okay, so this is the non-drive side, and again we go towards the front. Alright, just like that. Now this side should be already in good shape. I don't expect too much resistance here. There we go. Nice and clean. Now pedal should be able to go in there nice and smooth. Grab a little bit of alcohol to clean the oil. Paper towel. Threads. That's one. And that is two. Done. Outstanding. All right, now we could put these guys back on the bike.
we're going to start off with the non-drive side, okay? First, we put on our preload adjuster like we put it on before. Just make sure it's at the end, but don't crank it down at the end. There is no need to crank this down at the end. Always be gentle. It's cheap plastic, this thing, okay? And it cracks easy, and the head strip's really easy. So then we have our dust ring. As for the dust ring, there's a step on it. That step goes towards the bearing, okay? And the flat spot goes outside. The reason the step goes to the bearing, its purpose for this step over here is the step itself actually touches the inner bearing wall. And the rest of this dust cap, all it does is protect the seal of the bearing itself. So when putting this thing in, we just take it, we put the flat part, the outside part towards the, sometimes it'll be stiff, preload adjuster. So here's another tip. Don't over grease. We do not need to over grease a crankshaft, plain and simple. And make sure you never see grease on the outside of a crankshaft, okay? We only need a little bit of grease from the top part of that step that protects this bearing. And we only need it to sort of stop moisture from getting inside. But you do not want to over grease it because if grease pops out, Dirt's going to stick to it, and that dirt will get to the inside, and that dirt will grind away across the bearing, grind at the bearing walls, right? Now, this is a shot bearing. I'm going to replace this later uh, when I order a new one, but just to show you guys as far as putting it on. So what I do is I put a little bit of grease around here, okay? When I put this in, all that leftover grease should pack enough where it will fill the gap between this wall and this wall, but it should not come out, right? So... At the same time, I'm going to put a little bit of grease on this bearing wall and the opposing one, okay? And then I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to slip him through. As you can see, it's not going in easy. This should go in easy. That tells me, oops, the whole stand just came down. That tells me that my bottom brackets are not aligned. There's no questions asked that these bottom brackets are not aligned. I should not have to smack that guy in there like that to get this crank arm in. All right. So let me get my little mallet again. Never use a hammer on a carbon crank arm. If you are going to smack this guy in here, either use a soft rubber mallet, which I'm too lazy to go get mine. But what I have is a 16 millimeter socket that I could put on the inside where the spindle is. And then I could take my soft mallet and just tap him. Wow, look at how much force. That thing's way off. All right. Boy, listen to that. That just sounds horrible. <laughs> so anyway, that tells us that the bearings are not aligned, okay? Let me turn the bike around and finish this thing up. We installed the spindle with the non-drive side crank arm. And if you remember, I had placed a little bit of grease or some grease on the bearing on the inside. So when I pushed the spindle through, some of that grease came out with the spindle, right? So now what we're going to do, we're just going to take a little bit more grease, not much, just a little bit, coat just the outside of the flat part of the spindle. And also on the splines over here, put a little bit of grease on the splines here, right? The reason to put the grease on the splines here is to help eliminate creaking. All right, just like that. So now, we put our second dust seal in. Remember, we have a stepped side and a uh, flat side. Step side goes in, and as we put it in, it will collect all the remaining grease off that spindle and push it in against the wall of the bearing, okay? So, that being the case, since my gloves were greasy, just clean whatever you see. Make sure there's no grease on the outside. Again, make sure you have, mm, Make sure you have grease on the splines. Okay, now we are ready to install the drive side crank arm. The non-drive side, let it hang vertically all the way down. Drive side, we put it vertically up, right? We take our eight millimeter and we try and thread it in. Sometimes this goes in quick, sometimes it'll give you issues, right? But it will thread in. Okay, then when it starts getting stiff, we are going to tighten it just a little bit until it becomes pretty stiff. Okay, so I'm good there. And probably one more. There we go. Okay. So, 
the, so that's pretty stiff, right? All right, so here's another tip. Don't over torque your spindle bolt, okay? For some reason, a lot of people believe that the spindle bolt puts tension on the actual bearings. It doesn't, it puts zero tension on the bearings. I can tie this down as tight as I want and still be able to move the spindle back and forth, right? We do not want to over torque this thing. I've seen people torque this thing way beyond the 50 Newton meters that, that the race face recommends. And I only torque it to about 43 Newton meters. I never go above 45. And I have multiple of these race face nexts. I mean, I've had them for years. I have one of them in particular that I don't even know how many thousands of miles it has on it. And I've never torqued it down beyond 45, right? Outside of the first, first, let's say a few times when I first owned it. Um, I keep it around 43, 45 in that range and it's worked flawlessly. I've never had issues with it, right? Makes it easier to put on and off. So torque wrench right now I'm at, I put it to 43 already. I'm at 43, all right? So as always with a torque wrench, always grab it from the butt full palm. Never grab it like this, never grab it like that, right? And always bring it in a straight line to make sure that it is straight. So put it in its socket. All right. All right, grab the chain stay with the crank arm. You just use it as leverage. And a little bit more. There we go, 43.1. All right, next let's finish it up with the preload adjuster. Preload adjuster adjusts the tension on the bearings. The goal over here is to eliminate slop. So, Every cinch crank, when you bolt down, when you torque down the uh, spindle bolts, you will always get side to side movement, right? In this case, I'm not gonna get any side to side movement because this bearing's so shot and off angle that uh, there's no way I could do it, right? But you will get side to side movement this way, right? So the whole goal for the adjuster over here, the tension adjuster is to turn it to a point where it sits at the end near the bearing, nice and comfortable, and then figure out a point where there is zero play going side to side, but you have the most amount of free spin, right? So it's a balance between absolutely no play and as much spin as you could possibly get, right? Once you get there, okay, that's when you wanna tighten down the bolt. Now, I don't know if you can see that, let me reposition the camera. So here's yet another tip. Do not over tighten the preload bolt, all right? This is where a lot of people make a mistake. This is very weak metal and this is not exactly strong plastic. You could easily crack the plastic. Again, once you have found that point where there is no play and you get the most amount of spin, at that point you need to screw this thing down. You do not need to close this gap. In fact, don't close this gap. All you need to do is screw it down to a point where you won't be able to turn it by hand. And that literally should take no more than one, maximum two turns, all right? So for instance, I have a significant gap. I can't, I don't know if you can see the gap. Let me loosen it, move it so you can see the gap to give you an idea. So let's bring it down here. Hopefully you guys can see the gap there, right? So right now, there's a big gap, right? I could, you, I could obviously move it by hand. If I close it right there, no matter how hard I push on it, it is not moving anywhere. Yet we have a pretty decent sized gap. Do not try and close the gap. You're just gonna strip your bolt the next time you try and loosen it, and you might even potentially crack the plastic, okay? So again, when it comes to unloosening it, you should only have to turn it by half a turn or one full turn, and boom. That was half a turn, not exactly all that easy. So let's do it another half a turn. And now I, that was real easy, there you go. So again, one turn should be the difference. All right, that's how you make this thing last longer. Ta-da! There you go, folks. A refreshed race face next SL crank. This applies to basically all cinch cranks. Real easy cranks to work on. Highly recommend you give them some love twice a year. Um, it literally takes you I, it, once you get used to this, it will literally take you a few minutes. I'm talking about not even five, it's so quick. So, uh, plus you get to check your bearings too at the same time, right? 
So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Click subscribe button in order to get see more videos. Click the bell button, what ding, in order to get notified when new videos get released. All right. Until then, hope all is well with everyone. And we will be talking to you soon. Take care. Have a good one. Bye.